Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Bob McGoy. I'm going to be your host and chat monitor for this morning. Today, we have a presentation about an introduction to Geomagic Design X for reverse engineering. One of our techs out of St. Louis, Chad Whitbeck, is going to be helping us out this morning with that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Chad so we can go ahead and get started. All right, thank you, Bob. Uh, good morning, everybody. Like you said, we're going to be talking about Geomagic Design X. Uh, many of you have probably seen our VX model software. We're going to be looking at a little bit more powerful option that we have for reverse engineering. All right, so first off, let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to look at our options. So we'll go over a really quick uh, view of what VX model is and then Geomagic. We'll look into a bit more of what Design X looks like and what the process is with it. And then finally, ending with some capabilities of Design X. Uh, depending on how quickly we go, we may also get a look at using Design X as well, but since this is a pretty quick web, uh, webcast, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so again, our options so far for uh, reverse engineering are VX model and Design X. They're very bold, they're both very good softwares. VX model is nice because it integrates completely within the VX element software of our scanners. It has an automatic mesh cleaning tool, like it says. And it has various ways of creating our CAD models. We can either create a dumb solid body by creating a watertight mesh, either doing a surface off of that. That's very, very quick and very easy. And then we can also bring entities into our CAD platform, whether it be SolidWorks, Solid Edge, or Inventor, and we can use that to guide a full feature tree design in our CAD platform. So that, that one, of course, does take longer, but it does give us that perfect CAD model. So but, uh, there's like pros and cons of each method, uh, but it is a very powerful, very good software. Design X is more powerful than VX model. Uh, using Design X, we're able to, we're actually use only Design X to do our entire reverse engineering process. Uh, we're going to be creating it uh, all of its, it has its, it, it's, it has a CAD backbone, and then once we're done, we can go ahead and uh, do a transfer, as it says, to many more softwares than VX model can do. Uh, the other good thing about this is you can choose, do you want to do a, to switch over a full feature tree or just a thing, just the, the, the bodies that you come up with. And we'll see also that it has a great tool for creating and reverse engineering curved, uh, complex curved pipes. Uh, it works very, very well. All right, I think I skipped the slide. There we go. There we go. Somehow I skipped a bunch of slides. All right, so this is what DesignX looks like. Uh, as you can see, it's very Windows-based. It has, if you've seen our, if you've seen SolidWorks Composer, it, it may seem some, quite similar to you from that. Uh, just a, a quick overview of what it can do. We've got mouse commands off to the side. You can minimize that so it's out of your way. Command ribbons, very similar to your feature, to your uh, command manager in SolidWorks has uh, a lot of the same basic commands. As you can see, it does combine somewhat uh, your features and surfacing command um, uh, tabs all in one. Uh, we have our feature tree, similar to SolidWorks. Uh, entities created are down below. On this, you can see that it's been auto-segmented into mesh regions, and we'll talk about that a little more in a little bit. And then we can also control what's visible using this toolbar down below. So that's just to give you a basic outlook of what it can do. The command ribbons are as shown. Uh, the ones that uh, I use the most, I don't usually, usually use the menu as much because it has, while well, it does have all the commands, it's, uh, you have to go through all the different levels, and all those commands are also found in those other tabs. Uh, but from home, that's where I'm bringing in my scans, my uh, CAD models if I want to do any comparisons. Uh, I can, uh, with model, model sketch and alignment and region, I would say are the four most ones that I use the most. Um, you can do quite a bit with just those. Again, you can do 3D sketches, align the meshes to make sure that they, are, they come in correctly. It usually does a very good job of coming in in a reasonable method, reasonable uh, alignments, but sometimes you do have to realign it. Um, polygons is very good to allow us to go ahead and edit and heal, similar to the uh, abilities in VX model in terms of uh, repairing the mesh. You can do the same thing here. 
And so again, I'm not going to read off everything that's here, but again, this just gives you an idea of what all is av available. And then getting into the process. Our first step is to import the mesh, scan uh, point cloud, or we can actually scan directly in, in DesignX. It has the capabilities of connecting with a variety of scanners, including CareerForm scanners. Um, the next step would be to auto-segment that the scan regions to make it a little bit easier in that process. From there, we can create planes, cross-sections, again, very similar, but we're not having to take those planes and then transfer them to SolidWorks and do the work in SolidWorks. We're doing all the work inside DesignX. Uh, from there, we can automatically extract sketch entities from our cross-sections which I think is a very powerful and very useful tool. Uh, and then we'll also be able to extract geometric features from our mesh. And so as we go through this process, we're going to be able to reverse engineer our parts. Uh, now, again, for importing the mesh, we can bring in a wide variety of mesh types. Uh, as you can see, both meshes and CAD types can be brought in, pretty wide variety. We can also scan directly in DesignX. What happens when we scan in, in DesignX is it will actually bring up, and in our case, we use the CareerForm scanners, it'll bring up a session of VX elements uh, that we can use to scan our uh, model. And we still have the same editing tools, the, the same ability to, to do multiple meshes and merge them together. We still have all of that capability. Uh, we'll just be able, we're just, uh, it brings up that software to actually run the scanner, and then once we're done with it, we'll accept the scan, and it'll send it into VX model. Or, I'm sorry, not into VX model, it'll send it into DesignX. And then from there, we can use the polygons tab to optimize and repair the, the mesh once we have that mesh. Our next step is to auto-segment it. So, so looking at this model, the original shape is just the scan data. But what we're going to do is it's going to auto-segment this into what it considers to be the normal geometric shapes. And so we're going to be looking at planes, cylinders, toruses, freeform uh, surfaces. It's going to be looking to create as many of these as, as possible. And as you can see, we have a sensitivity factor on there. So we can uh, get have them more or less smoothed out, basically or let it uh, take averages more or less across surfaces to de define planes, to define uh, cylinders, things like that. Uh, so it's a very useful tool to automatically allow us to understand what shapes are, part, are a part of our design already. Again, once we've finished this, we can go on to creating our planes and cross sections. Uh, again, we're doing this right off the mesh. What I'll generally do is I'll create a plane off of a, uh, one of the planar surfaces on the mesh. And from there, I can choose to do an offset, specific offset at a certain distance. I can do a silhouette offset as well, or I can do a silhouette so it will create a, uh, basically a rectangle uh, in geometric space. And it's going to look for the uh, silhouettes in that space. Uh, but I can get quite a bit of information from here. Uh, and then once I have that cross-section, for example, here's the cross-section I have right here, I can either choose to do a line command and select these solid lines, or these, these, uh, these yeah, the solid lines, not the dashed ones, and it will automatically create a line that best fits that line. Or I also have a automatic uh, sketch tool, and I can go through each portion. Instead of doing a line command and doing line commands for each specific line, I can just go through and then uh, curves on the or arcs on the on the arcs on the corners. I can do that, but then I have to connect the edges where those lines and corner and the arcs come together, which isn't too bad, but it can sometimes be a hassle. Or I can use the automatic tool and go through and connect everything all at once. I do still have to do some minor editing to make sure I have all the correct relations in there, uh, things like that but it allows us to get the job done again much faster, which is what we're all after. Uh, from here, we can also extract geometric features from the mesh. And so, for example, right here, a decent portion of this is just a straight cylinder. Uh, obviously, not all of it is, but we can use the regions that we, uh, that we have on the object to create specific shapes, whether they're planes, cylinders, uh, cones, spheres, toruses. Again, we have a lot of, uh, we have options here, and we can either do this as surfaces or as solids to bring us in this information. 
All right, some capabilities of the software. Again, I mentioned that easy pipe creation. This is a great tool. So what, again, what we would do here is we can select the regions that go along this pipe, and it's going to create a 3D, uh, a 3D center path for that pipe. Now it's going because of the way that it's bringing things in. As, as you can see, the white line, it's not the straight line that we might want, especially as we can see in this corner right over here. And so we can create then a 3D spline that will approximate this and get this so it's much more smooth. Once we have that, it's a very simple process to do a solid sweep, and we can connect both sides. So again, this is a much easier process than would be available in the past. And as long as we have enough of the surface scanned to allow it to recognize uh, that this is a pipe, then we ha are able to do this. All right, we can also do measurements, uh, measure the mesh during our feature creation. So like this, in this case right here, we're doing a fillet off of this object right here. One of the tools is to estimate the radius from the mesh. This allows us to much more accurately figure out what radius we want. If it does, in this case, I think the radius it gives us is about 3.495. It's, it's very close to 3.5, and so I just rounded up to 3.5 once I found the estimated radius from the mesh. So again, it's measuring the mesh is giving it more intelligence than just trying to eyeball it or trying to uh, do some other things. In the past, I've been with VX model on some surfaces, you can approximate fillet sizes by creating cylinders, but there's no way to create a cylinder to measure this mesh right here. I could do a cross section and then try to visually compare it, but again, that's just doing a visual comparison. This gives me a much better accurate um, estimation of that radius. As I mentioned before, this has a CAD backbone. We're creating fully parametric features in our reverse engineered objects. We can choose to do a transfer from the very first feature. If we have an issue, we can, uh, it'll actually stop the mesh and it'll transfer as much as it can. And then we can, uh, and then we can go through and see what we can do to fix whatever feature is causing an issue, and then we can resume from that feature. Or we can just say, I only want to send in specific bodies, selected entities, whether it be plain, solid bodies, surface bodies, what have you. Uh, but from there, we can also choose which version of SOLIDWORKS. We have multiple versions of the SOLIDWORKS open or on the computer, which one it's going to go into. Uh, but again, this has the full design intent in, of the CAD platform in DesignX. And so uh, if we need to make any changes, we open it in DesignX, we make the changes and then do that transfer again. Um, or maybe, uh, like, like I said, delete the features that you decide you don't want and then resume the transfer from wherever you left off. So it makes it, so it gives it much more intelligence, much more um, feedback than just having the dumb solid bodies and having to, and doing it once and then having to start over from scratch if you need to, to do any changes or adjustments. This also comes with an accuracy analyzer. And so we can, once we have that solid body, we can visually verify whether or not it is accurate to our mesh. All these numbers on here are adjustable and you can choose how tight of tolerance you want this to be. Again, this allows us to verify whether or not we're accurate, whether or not we need to do some extra work to, again, make sure that we have the best model possible. Uh, just one more tool, instead of thinking that it's good but not being quite sure, this tells us exactly yes for sure. I don't need any inspection software to do this. It comes with Geomagic and we're able to verify that we've done a good job in reverse engineering our part. As I mentioned before, it does transfer to many platforms. And also, as always, if, if there's a platform that's used that's not on this list, uh, I see that Katia's not on this list. Um, that one, for things like that, you could just save the, the solid bodies off as one of the neutral file formats. I just got something like that. So again, again, it gives us a pretty good idea of what it can do and uh, allows us to get the job done. Let's go ahead, we have some extra time uh, after running through that PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and take a look at DesignX. Uh, so we already saw this briefly. 
and some of the slides of this object, this water bottle. As I mentioned before, the first step is to auto-segment this. I'm going to go ahead and set this down to 60% sensitivity. The more complicated the object, this can take a bit longer. Another thing that's very helpful with this is it's kind of straight out right now, but we can do a resegment, which means if I have specific faces that I need a little bit more information on, it's a little bit too general, I can click on a face, choose resegment, and I can segment that at whatever sensitivity I want to get a little bit more information out of it. All right, so once we have this again, if I look at this, I can see that that's classified as a revolution, cylinder, cylinder, cone. So I've got all those different options and I can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and use my right plane to do a sketch. Now, just because I don't like to see that in the background, I'm going to turn off my mesh and I'm going to go ahead and use this auto sketch. From here, I just have to select which things I want to bring in. And actually, I don't want to bring that one in, but I'll uh, delete that in a moment. All right, so again, there is half of it. Since this is a, re uh, a revolved thing, I'm going to just do half of it. Hit OK. Use the line command to find the sensor. And go up. I can go ahead and extend this line over. And then I'll trim away the portions I don't need. Let's switch this to power trim. All right. And once we have that one trimmed off, we are finished. We can go back to our model and revolve this. So again, very quickly, very neatly, we got that, we, we finished that and got that done. I'm going to turn the mesh off, turn the mesh on and switch back to the solid body. And I will go ahead and draw, do a start up another one on based off of the right plane now. So I can get, now I'm going to create the cutout now that I have the main shape. So again, turn off the mesh. And because there might be some curves going through here, I do want to make sure I only select the straight lines. And as you can see, one side came in uh, vertical, the other side did not. So I need to go ahead and make sure that I set that to be vertical and then adjust that accordingly. From there, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line up above, mm -hmm. extend those straight lines up and trim away the portions I don't need. Once I have that, I'm going to do another extrude and somewhat dissimilar to SOLIDWORKS instead of doing having two separate commands for cuts and uh, solid extrusions, it's all contained within one. We just have to choose whether it's cut and then we can also choose if solid bodies are being merged if, it, if we are doing a solid extrusion. Let's go ahead and choose cut. I'm going to go through all in direction one and through all in direction two. Again, very quick, very easy. From here, I'm going to bring in my mesh and let's go ahead and I want to recognize this as this is a cylinder. And I'm going to hide that for a moment because I also want to, I'm going to create a surface of a plane that's right up here on top, so I can use that to cut any extra that I might have from that cylinder. If we look at our solid body that does extend just a little bit past what I want. So once I have that, I can go ahead and let's see here. Do a Boolean. I want to cut it with the surface. Target body is that. Let 
And it looks like I did the opposite. I got the opposite result. Do an intersect. I uh, can't do that. Oh, I know why it did that. Let's choose the bottom portion, not the top portion. Nope, nope, still doesn't like that. And I want to keep that lower portion. There we go. So let's go ahead and uh, turn off the surface body. Again, that goes down. But uh, now I want to make sure that these two solid bodies are, can be combined. If they don't intersect, it will let me know. They do intersect. So we now have one solid body again. And let's go ahead and cut out both portions on the side. So again, turn off the solid body so I can see them clearly. I'm just going to do a mesh fit on here. Let's simplify this a little bit. All I need is eight control points. That gives me a nice smooth mesh. And I'll just do this four times. Now that I have those there, I'm going to go ahead, I can turn, go ahead and turn my mesh off, turn my solid body back on. And again, I can work on cutting this out. Oops, I don't want edges. I want surfaces. Get that middle region, and as you can see, very, very quick, very easy to cut that away. Hide those uh, surfaces again. Let's go ahead and add those fillets. See that tool that we saw earlier? Let's see your fillet command. I'm going to go and choose that edge. Now, again, I want to be able to estimate that radius from the mesh, so I'm going to click on that button. And in this case, it did measure it somewhat uh, strangely. It's giving me a, a 16 millimeter, and as you can see, it's definitely too large. Since they're all the same size, I'm going to go ahead and measure a different one, see if I get a different result. As we can see, that came in much uh, more what I would expect, 3.4688. And so again, like I said, if you want, you can round it up a little bit. I'll go ahead and round it up to 3.5, just because I like nice even numbers. Uh, again, that, that gives you the flexibility of adding that in exactly how you want that. There's also a small field on the bottom. And we'll go ahead and change this to 0.625. All right, so again, very simple, very easy process. Uh, all that's really left here is decide there. Uh, the only thing I haven't done yet is setting the inside hole right here and then setting in a uh, shell on here or maybe creating a lid on this. Uh, but basically, all of it has been finished. Uh, I hope you guys have been able to see the power that exists in GeoMagic. Uh, like I, I mentioned, we, I, we've mentioned before, if you have any more questions, uh, you can uh, take a look at this video later on once it's been posted. Uh, please contact us if you have any extra questions or you would you like to see a more in-depth demonstration. Uh, but thank you very much for your attention. Does anybody have any questions before we sign off? Uh, yeah. Yeah, can, can you read, show that, that comparison of the scale again, of the CAD model to the actual mesh, um, how, how accurate you got it, the accuracy, I think is what you called it. Um, yes. Can you crank it down to like a profile of like plus or minus 3,000, let's say, of an inch? All right, so uh, plus or minus, how much did you say? If you're in inches, I, let's say three thousandths. All 
And so we can see here, and again, you can adjust these values if you want, but. And can, can you, is, it, is this uh, color map here, is it, is it also uh, overlapped with the CAD? Is the CAD showing also, or is this just, just purely just the uh, comparison color map of the, of the two? Yeah, this is overlapped on top of the CAD model. Okay. So, for example, that like the top of your little uh, cylinder on top, there's some red in there. Uh, clearly, that's that's outside. Can you are you able to turn the turn the mesh back on and see exactly? And so yeah, that that right that there is because I have there's a hole in the mesh right here where yeah, the that's... where you from. Uh, but I had I don't have that in the solid body, and so that's why we're seeing the yeah. red. Right, and, and I recognize that. I just wondered if it was for somebody that was coming into this, they're not able to tell right away what that what was causing that. But um, okay, you, you answered my question. It doesn't look like you can see the color mesh on top of the mesh. It's only on the CAD model. CAD model. Yes, it's overlaid on the CAD model. Okay, because in this situation, the purpose of it is to show you how much you're deviating away from the scan data, not the opposite direction. It's it's not a it's not a quality inspection tool in this situation. It's a how well did I reverse engineer it? So you really uh, do want to see yeah. how how close you are on the on the solid model you're generating, and not the other way around. That's that's when we get into the other modules that DesignX and um, also PolyWorks do for inspection purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, you said DesignX. Is that what you meant to say? This is this DesignX. This is DesignX. Yes. Yeah, you said uh, the other the other uh, software packages. Oh, what was the other one? Yeah, for for the most part, kind of the industry standard for inspection purposes when it comes to mesh is PolyWorks. Mm -hmm. um, it does an amazing job with, with leveraging 3D and T off of CAD models and being able to take a CAD model into their system, set up an inspection plan, and then deliver a mesh to that CAD model and see how far in and out your scan is of your real-world model to your actual CAD data. Right, right. But yeah, that's for inspection. I, I just heard you mention DesignX as one of the inspection modules. I don't think that's what you meant. Yeah, there, there is, there is a, um, an inspection module for Geomagic that 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 can be used. We usually recommend PolyWorks instead, though. Okay, so it, but it's not called DesignX, is it? I, I I forget exactly what the module is called. It's Geomagic something. I, I I'd have to yeah. look at the, the the Gantt chart on that one. Okay, no, no worries. Thank you. But we we have investigated it, and like like Bob mentioned, we do recommend PolyWorks. It is a much more it's it's much much more developed platform. Okay. Yeah, so both both tools have their strengths, so we, we kind of feel that Geomagic's the superior reverse engineering tool where PolyWorks is the superior inspection tool. Gotcha. Good questions. Um, does the solve software have similar scan cleanup tools as Geomagic? Are you talk, are talking about VX model? I'm or? assuming so. Okay, so yes. Um, I don't have the VX model pulled up, but yes, we have a healing wizard, so it allows us to heal defects. This is the automa automated tool, similar to the clean mesh tool that uh, the VX model has. Similarly, we also have things like filling holes, defeaturing. Uh, we can global remesh helps to help smooth things out. Uh, all these things, pretty, yeah, basically all of these things VX model has as well, whether it's smoothing, decimating. Um, doing offsets or splits, editing boundaries, thicken. I don't believe that it does have that one. There, there are a few tools that it doesn't have, but uh, by and large, all of the repair editing of the mesh tools that we have here, uh, VX model has as well. They both do a really good job of cleaning up meshes. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for, for spending the time with us today. Um, we've got another webcast this afternoon and two more every day through the end of the month. So feel free to see what other webcasts you find might be of value and just feel free to attend. We're only 25, 30 minutes of, of presentation, get you in, get you back out to work. So thank you very much.